Hello there, a crumpy old fart here. Uh, wet my whistle a little bit. Um, I'm doing a Star Trek The Role Playing Game story about a group of players I had a while back and they were hilarious. Really good players, really smart people. You'll see why. Years ago I'd been running a campaign with six players. We'd been running the USS Lexington, and uh, which the Lexington was a sister ship to the USS Enterprise under James Kirk, back during the original series. My players had a lot of fun and really, really enjoyed the game. But, like what happens in many games, the players wanted to change it up a bit. They, they, were, they, they were having fun, but they wanted to do something different. Uh, and they wanted, they wanted me to work up something different because they, they liked the game. They just wanted to do something different, which happens a lot. No big deal. What I did was I gave each player, I had each player write down what they wanted you know, to just take a, a sheet, write down some notes, what, however much they wanted to do, and each give it to me privately. That way, everybody, what nobody was pressured into giving me something other somebody else wanted. And I, I was, and the idea was, I would take all these notes and put them together and try to figure out a way to make everybody happy. Which is one of the one of the goals of, the, of a game master is to make your players happy. If your players aren't having fun, you're doing the wrong thing. They're, you know, they they're doing the wrong thing, and the game master's not doing his job. I've said this in many other videos. So, at any rate, I took all these notes and I <clears throat> and I pulled them together and I read them and I, I wrote down all the pertinent stuff. And the consensus was they wanted to play in the CD criminal underworld of Star Trek. So I worked up the destroyer Geronimo. The Geronimo was a vessel tasked with more more police keeping duties and less exploration. They didn't want to like you know patrol the border and, and like that except for smuggling and like that but they 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 wanted to do more i guess down and dirty play for lack of a better word so i worked up the geronimo um i had each player draw randomly for the position on the ship and roll randomly for their character's race and they they could other than that they could make up whatever they wanted and i sat down with each character and each person individually each player and we made up their character um most of their character their characters came out very colorful most of them uh, were not they weren't standard starfleet characters most of them spent time in the merchant marines most of them were they weren't top of the class we'll just leave it at that and the, the the six players that I had, here we go. Mike ended up being the commander. He was an Andorian commander, uh, blue skin with antennas, very warlike. Uh, Fred was the the uh, executive officer, the, the first officer. He was a Gorn, a Gorn who had been kicked out of the Gorn hegemony and went and applied at Starfleet and got, you know, because Starfleet is inclusive, they, they allowed him to join. Um, you know, he had background checks and all that, and he was good, so they let him join. He was a lieutenant commander. Uh, Bobby was the helmsman. He was a human lieutenant. Ed was the chief engineer. He was a Vulcan lieutenant. William was the chief medical officer. He was a human lieutenant. David was the security tactical officer. He was a, a Tellarite. Tellarites are, they, they, they have snouts, kind of like pigs, very, very argumentative. They don't get along with anybody. The whole point is to win the argument no matter what. They're great in debates, and they're good on a battlefield, but not so much anywhere else. So, <clears throat> those were our six players, and they started off investigating a smuggling ring, and they did well. They knew the ins and outs of what the criminals had to do. They solved it pretty handily. It was, it was a pretty quick mission. Their first mission was very, very impressive, and I really, really enjoyed running that game. What I didn't realize was the penchant my players had for crime. Before long, the bridge staff had established themselves as a criminal organization, rivaling anything you might see on The Sopranos. Fred, the executive officer, was the captain's Enforcer wouldn't be too broad of a term. <laughs> it wouldn't be it wouldn't be wrong to say he was the enforcer. He made sure the ship ran smoothly and prevented any of the crew from exposing the criminal activities. Bobby the helmsman became an arms dealer, a weapons smuggler. 
uh, Ed, the engineer, ran the black market in the entire sector. It didn't take him long to take that thing over because they had a Federation destroyer backing them up. Phasers and photon torpedoes. Yeah, they could they could back up pretty much anything. When you're when the opposition has freighters with lasers and you have a Federation warship, yeah, you can pretty well take over anything you want. Uh, William, the medical officer, he, he basically had a, a illegal narcotics operation going on. Yeah. Uh, David, the security officer, <laughs> pimped out prostitutes across the sector. He literally turned the ship into a traveling brothel. Guest quarters were turned into these lavish suites, and the girls were put in there, and they, anywhere they wanted to go, they were, they, they were making money hand over fist there. Mike, the commanding officer, fixed all of the paperwork and covered for the crew in exchange for a cut which he shared with Fred. This was as, as efficient a criminal organization as I've ever heard of. The players were very, very smart, and, and since they were the ones responsible for stopping this activity in the sector, it took over a year in real-time, real-time gameplay. It took, it took me over a year to finally discover them and send a couple of vessels that were capable of stopping them. And they, of course, they uh, uh, one of them died and the rest of them ended up in prison, but my point is... They, they had it going on. If they hadn't been so blatant about it, 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 it they could have kept doing it. That was what, what got them was the blatancy. You know, the, the, in order to, in order to uh, facilitate crime, people have to know about it. You have to have a certain, you can't make money dealing drugs if nobody knows where to go get the drugs. You can't make money as a, as a pimp if nobody knows where the prostitutes are. You have to advertise uh, on some level, and that's where they got caught. But it, like I said, it took me over a year in real life, uh, gaming with them for a year to get all this to get caught, and I tried to trip them up every way I knew how. And they, my players were freaking smart; they were awesome players. And after this was over, they went back to the Lexington, and the Lexington was nice and fresh, and they were okay playing on the Lexington after that. The Lexington after that. So yeah, it was fun. We enjoyed it. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> wise guys in space. <laughs> oh my lord. <clears throat> the things gamers get up to. You folks have a good day. God bless one and all.